Yeah, ready. All right, we're here with uh, Coach Robbie Hill, the University of San Diego. Uh, hey, Robbie, nice to see you again. Great to see you. Right hey, Robbie, now you know now that you're in sports management, uh, what do you appreciate most about growing up in a sports family? Yeah, I think I think I appreciate the most um, just the number one, the competitive side of things. Um, every single thing, whatever I was doing, I was always encouraged to be uh, competitive. But also, more importantly, what it instills in your character. I know being in a sports family is different than a normal family because it's uh, it's a lot of travel. My dad being the head coach, it's a lot of different things going on. But what I learned is number one, just consistent effort over time in everything I do, and that's kind of helped uh, shape who I am today. Get it? All right, Robbie, hey, how do you describe the coaching behavior philosophy with the Torero baseball program? Absolutely. So I think it's just on and off the field um, character development. I think that what we focus on at the Torero uh, baseball camps is the cultivation of the intellect, the mental game. It's so easy to come out here and go through the motions. What we focus on is more about the why and why, you know, what it really takes to, to feel the ground ball. All goes back to um, why we do what we do, and we do that. Um, I think by just empowering the um, all the kids that come here, making them feel good, but also focusing on process-oriented praise versus task-oriented praise. Awesome. That's awesome. So, Robbie, why do you think your summer camps here at USD that you're running also are growing year to year despite incredible direct competition? Yeah, I think um, when we look at every other camp, every other camp's gonna wanna provide an experience, but we customize an experience. We wanna make sure that people come here, they're having fun, but at the same time, they're leaving being a better ball player. You know, I know uh, me, I'm involved more on the sales um, side of things and growing these camps, and I know time and time again, uh, we hear nothing but good things about it. And hey, I mean, I'm getting videotaped by you guys right here, so obviously I think we did something right. That's right, we travel a long way. That's right, 5,000 miles. That's right. <laughs> you ready to go? Yeah, I'm You're ready. throwing the sun off, man. You're throwing them off. All right, here we go. <clears throat> ready? So, Robbie, lastly, I really am amazed uh, on how you and your coaches remember everyone at these camps. Uh, what are the things that you do to make sure you personally acknowledge everyone? Absolutely. I think the biggest thing is that our staff works on focusing on core confidence. We want the same thing with every single player. So we give each other nicknames. You know, me, yeah, my name's Robbie, but my camp name is uh, Rockstar Robbie. We make sure, uh, number one, that we know everyone's name because if they feel empowered, they're gonna wanna get better, they're gonna wanna be better. Not only that though, but they're gonna wanna kinda do a ripple effect and make everybody around them better. So we just we just really focus on, hey, this guy's name and having that spread just so camp's not only gonna run smoothly, but our business goes as well. So, John? So Coach Robbie, thank you very much and uh, thanks for making all the athletes want to be encouraged to come back the next day. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Right on, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're here with Austin Green, former Torero baseball star and now uh, with the Detroit, Detroit Tigers. Yes, sir. All right, congratulations on all the success. We, You know, here at the HOF, we're always interested in what, what keeps you going, right? And obviously playing professional, you kept going for a while. What was the greatest coaching memory you've had uh, up to now on your journey to professional baseball? Uh, that's a good question. I, I can't think of one specific memory, but I can think of many coaches who have had a huge impact on my life. Uh, my college coach, Rich Hill, hitting coach, Jay Johnson, pitching coach, Tyler Kincaid, Eric Bounsway, Mark Viamontes. Uh, that's the whole USD staff that was here while I was here, and they helped shape me and mold me into who I am now. Uh, during those 18 year old to 22 year old years and I'll just never forget the USD experience. Those are tough years. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. So um, I, you know, how would you describe your coaching experience uh, from a coach's behavioral perspective when you were at the University of San Diego? Oh awesome. Um, they were definitely disciplinarians so if we were out of line we would get told we were out of line. Um, but that helped us grow, helped us learn, and uh, they also loved on us at the same time. Uh, and encouraged us to be better, be better people, be better players. Uh, so it was, it was an amazing experience. You know, what, what would you say the difference, the main differences you've witnessed between professional and amateur when it comes to, to coaching on the behavior side? 
I think uh, in one word, the intimacy is the relationships that you build with your coaches during college. Uh, in professional baseball, it's a little more individualized in the sense that you're kind of on your own unless you ask for help. Uh, the coaches don't necessarily get to know you as well as they do in college. They don't know your family like they do in college. Uh, so it's very different, but um, yeah, I mean, college, college was fantastic in regards of building a lifelong relationship. So, you know, Austin, lastly, you know, what do you feel is the most important thing that you keep top of mind when you are now coaching amateur athletes in camps like this? Just the impact that we have. Um, each, t each moment that we have with a person, we can either affect them positively or negatively. And we'd like to keep most of those positive. So just remembering that these kids look up to us and uh, we'll help molding them into the people that they're going to be one day. Well, that's awesome. Well, thank you for being a great baseball camp uh, coach. The campers really enjoyed having you. I know thank my son did. Now. So thank my you pleasure. very much. All my right. Pleasure. All right, we're here at the University of San Diego with head baseball coach Rich Hill. Coach, great to see you again. Great to see you guys. Thanks for allowing me to be part of your your program. You know, congratulations on a, another great Torero season. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your coaching career to date. Well, I started when I was 24, uh, and now <clears throat> it is 30 years later. You know, so um, coaching is uh, very uh, dear to me. Um, you know, like I said, I started at a young age, had to figure out a lot of things, what works, what doesn't work. Um, I've been at uh, Cal Lutheran University, which was uh, went from NAIA to Division III. I've been at the University of San Francisco, which was, you know, a program in desperate need of rebuilding at the time that I got there. Um, and then at USD, same thing, kind of a rebuilding phase, and now we're, you know, uh, inside the top 25 for a month. Um, we've you know, arguably the best player in baseball, Chris Bryant, you know, is an alum here, uh, and we're doing some great things, but it's, uh, it's been a journey, you know, and it's not without its twists and turns and valleys and peaks, um, but I love the profession. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, Coach, uh, let's discuss your, discuss your coaching philosophy with uh, respect to coaching behavior. As you know, mm -hmm. in the HOF Hall of Fame coaching program, uh, sur the first survey question is about encouraging the athlete to mm -hmm. want to come back right. the very next day. How do, you, how do you and your staff plan for this year to year? Well, I think you just said it. I mean, the, the word encouragement, uh, to encourage, um, just one sentence of encouragement uh, to anyone, really, not just a player or a, a camper or a student athlete or somebody on your team, uh, can can really go a long way. A compliment um, can inspire. So, I mean, you're really talking about leadership. Uh, coaching is about, among other things, getting the most out of your players, getting the most out of your coaching staff. So. Uh, I believe the best coaches are the best leaders. Uh, there's a pyramid of John Wooden's you know, success up there. Um, and he didn't really talk about winning. You know, I mean, he, and you'll hear me say this throughout the interview, coaching from the inside out. Uh, when you really uh, can build a relationship, uh, you know, with a player, with a student athlete, with, um, with anyone really, uh, they'll do anything for you. And uh, if you can show them uh, that you care, uh, that goes a long way. And that's what just keeps bringing people back. Uh, I also believe on the other side of it, the physical part of it, you know, that skill set development. Um, you know, kids especially, um, ages, you know, five through high school, five through, you know, a hundred actually, um, really want to play, uh, participate in things that they are good at, that they can have success at, that keeps bringing them back. So I think as coaches, we have to put our guys in an environment um, that is enthusiastic, uh, that is high energy, and that really promotes uh, success. You know, on an incremental basis, when people have success and they're and they're, they, they just they enjoy what they're doing a lot more. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Coach, you know, at, at the HOF, we point out that uh, if athletes aren't, aren't personally acknowledged, they may just pick up and quit at any level. Mm -hmm. um, how do you acknowledge everyone? you got a big team here. 
It's in our DNA, you know, as human beings. It doesn't, it's not, you know, uh, restricted to a player coach uh, relationship. I think, uh, you know, that's, we were meant, you know, to uh, be in a community, you know, uh, as human beings. Uh, the more that you can acknowledge uh, on a personal level, the more that you can encourage uh, on a personal level, the more that you can give um, feedback on that personal level, uh, the better the whole experience and the better the relationship will be. The best managers uh, in Major League Baseball, Buck Showalter comes to mind. Uh, we had a player here, Brian Mattis, played for Buck. And uh, it was always, um, <clears throat> you know, Buck was, you can stop that, i got to open that up. Here. Buck Showalter, uh, you know, would, would go around, you know, every day and talk to everybody on the team during batting practice, even if it was just, hey, what's up, how's it going, how's your arm feeling? Um, I think that, that personal acknowledgement really goes a long way and the managers uh, today are finding out that that is you know the best uh, style of leadership uh, Dave Roberts is excellent uh, at that Joe Madden you know so those kind of guys come to mind uh, and as of now I mean they're getting the most out of their players uh, on a daily basis that's awesome yeah so coach at uh, HOF we speak of growing the village uh, how have you been so successful in building not only the USD Baseball Village, but the San Diego Baseball Village? It's a culture, you know, and uh, specifically the USD Baseball culture is built on the things that you're talking about. Uh, it is coaching from the inside out. It's relationship building. Uh, it is uh, creating a positive uh, environment that is centered around enthusiasm. Uh, it is all about a growth mindset, you know, and that's, you know, not easy. But when you go through these things, you know, um, these stages as players here at USD, uh, you know, you go through some hard things, you know, and like anything, there's all kinds of sacrifice and commitment, and it takes some perseverance to get through. When you do that, you bond um, with the guys on the team and with the coaches. Uh, and, and you have a special sense of family that doesn't go away so that goes from the you know the, the year to year and the older guys take over teach the younger guys and it just becomes this big mushroom cloud you know of what we're all about here at USD you know and our identity and what's important to us and um, it's not about the trophies in the other room you know because those gather dust you know, uh, it's about uh, the brotherhood that is USD baseball. I mean, when, when we see each other, we hug. You know, it's just, it's not a handshake or what's up. I mean, it's because it's that emotional uh, of a thing that we go through. So building a culture in anything should be number one. In a business, uh, if you're an elementary school teacher, if you're an elementary school principal, uh, if you're a college baseball coach, football coach, or wherever, the culture has got to be number one. Um, as far as building a, a brand in, in, in USD or kind of growing a village, I mean, you just saw we're, we're, we're doing the nickel speech and it, you know, a shiny nickel represents the great teammate. So we have an opportunity to, you know, for the last 20 years, speak to over 300 kids growing up in San Diego. So it becomes a ministry mm -hmm. um, and I can you know, have an impact you know, on some of these kids ages 5 through 15 uh, on a yearly basis, you know, to where they put that nickel up on their mirror. Some kids come back and say, hey, I've got six of them, you know, I still have my nickel on my mirror, you know, I'm 18 years old, I was here, you know, 12 years ago. Um, so that's pretty cool. So you, you just never know who you're going to impact, you know. Um, the other thing, I know it's a long answer, but... It's all good. I make our players, I mean, be a little league coach, you know, uh, they are, part of them being in our program is that when they are a dad, and, and like you said, easy to be a father, you know, but hard to be a dad and a parent, they will be coaching their youth, uh, their, their kids' youth teams, whether it be girls' soccer, you know, uh, boys' basketball, whatever it may be, because of the things that they learn in our program the things that they'll be able to take out and really have an impact on young people. So we're, we're making an impact here in the community, here in the community, and after 30 years we have all of these guys out there coaching in all of these youth leagues, 
running summer camps and telling the same stories and doing the same crazy things that we did here. So that's the legacy. A hundred years from now, there's going to be people around walking this earth, you know, that, you know, had an impact from what we were, what we were doing. You know, the trophies in there, they'll be disintegrated, you know. Sure. So. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. That was a great question. It's the hardest thing to really judge in recruiting is makeup. Um, you know, you can't really tell what's going to happen once we put the uniforms on. The lights go on and they hear their name over the loudspeaker and cross that white line. You know, some kids uh, really aren't ready for that um, emotionally, um, mentally. Uh, other kids thrive in that type of environment and they love the competition and they can make adjustments on the fly. Uh, so everybody's at kind of a different emotional slash mental level. Um, in the recruiting process, there are things that stand out, uh, and I'm not sure the kids even really understand this. They should. They should have people telling them this, that, you know, I look at a pitcher when the shortstop makes an error. Uh, how does he react? You know, how does the shortstop react when he makes an error? Is it, hey, we'll get the next one, me and you on the double play, let's go, there's one out, you know, pounding the glove, we're ready, or is it shrugging the shoulders? You know, it's bad body language, same thing on the mound. At the plate, same thing. You know, there's a hitter, look back at the umpire, you know, on a borderline pitch. Um, is he uh, show bad, bad body language when it comes to failure? So I guess in a nutshell, it's how these guys are going to react to failure, how they are with their teammates, how they are in the dugout, what time they get to the field, how they're dressed. Do they have visible jewelry? Do they have this? You know, so there's all kinds of things that go into this character makeup thing. And um, every single coach that's coaching was kind of a grinder, you know? And they probably weren't the elite big league player, so we had to figure it out, you know? So we kind of gravitate towards that kid who's just a hustler, um, the yes sir, no sir type of guy that's, you know, all about the team, very unselfish and the things that we all aspire to be. That's great. Yeah. You know, um, we see reminders uh, in this beautiful complex mm -hmm. of all the great USD baseball alumni that uh, play or have played in the MLB. Uh, how do you ensure that the ones that don't make it still feel part of of the village? Well, that's that's a that's a given. You know, um, when you are eight years old and you go to bed at night dreaming you know of playing for the Toronto Blue Jays you know and the Seattle Mariners and, and you know it's the last thing you think about and the first thing you think about um, so you know you need to be that dream chaser and as a coach you need to just stoke that fire you know um, there are dream killer coaches out there too dream, dream killer parents hey have a fallback plan that's it's hard to make it. The odds are against you. Go, go, you know, do all these kinds of things, and it's just that negative energy that it gets into these kids' minds. So we say, yeah, there's all kinds of examples to point to in the major leagues of guys that didn't make their high school team. Um, there's, uh, you know, so let's go for it. Be as good as you can be, and the only way that there is failure is if you quit. That's it. It's the only way, in my mind, that's the only time anybody fails. You know, so there's going to be a point in time when your skill set um, is not going to be there. I don't care who you are. You know, Willie Mays can't play right now. He's 90 years old or whatever. So it's going to happen to everybody, but let somebody else take the uniform off your back. <clears throat> now, I am just as proud uh, of our guys that are out in the community um, married kids great jobs they marry these great girls from usd they're out there coaching our little league team the travel ball team the girls soccer team and are very active in their church you know active in the community so for me to see that and hold their little babies you know um and for them to come back to alumni games that's what it's all about you know it's fun to go see chris bryant and brian mattis you know, on the same field, and a former player of mine, Michael Borzello, right next to Joe Madden, you know, um, but it's equally as cool to see what these other guys that aren't big league players are doing in their lives. They are just kicking butt. So, awesome. 
it's all the same, and we all respect what, what each other is doing. You know, Coach, uh, during a high school prospect camp held here last September, um, where actually my oldest son attended, mm -hmm. there were a lot of anxious parents. Mm -hmm. um, you may or may not remember what you said in the opening statement, uh, but you said, Welcome to San Diego, the closest thing to paradise. Enjoy mm -hmm. the day, the facilities, and celebrate your kids. Mm -hmm. I wrote that down. Yeah. That was very powerful as it set the tone and eased some of the anxieties of uh, the parents and players. You know, what else do you tell parents who are maybe a little over anxious about ki their kids making it or breaking it at such an early age? Well, again, that's another long question. You know, I mean, uh, my wife is uh, the best, in my opinion, you know, at the child development, child psychology, um, very active in our church and, and works a lot with parents and I've really learned a lot from her. Um, but, you know, as a parent, you know, I think, you know, that that our number one job, I mean, there's one AAA, there's a lot of number one jobs, but it is to put your child in an environment uh, where they can really flourish, you know, so a growth mindset by the parents. Um, and and really just be a dream stoker, you know, that's what I call it. And uh, these kids, you know, they shouldn't have any limitations on what they feel um, they can accomplish. Um, I encourage parents not to build a fence around their kids um, and feed them with things that are negative and just be very, very supportive uh, in everything that they're doing. Encourage them um, in all of their likes, in all of their um, passions, and and just be there. You know, time is the number one thing that you can give your kid uh, and support. And believe me, all those kids at that prospect camp, you know that their mom, their dad, their grandma, their grandpa, their cousin, their aunt, their uncle is sitting in the stands drinking a Starbucks coffee and watching them. And that makes people feel good. You know, so. I try to get that message across to parents. Um, again, there's a, there's a lot of different agendas with parents, you know, and especially it gets to the high school level. Uh, money becomes involved, which is directly equated to scholarship. Um, but I, I think what it really boils down to is they just want the best for their kid, um, and they want to you know get their kid in the best environment. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is. Um... You know, your your son Robbie has been working with you um, yeah. <laughs> with the youth camps and doing an amazing job. He he said it is awesome. Mm -hmm. You might not know this, but he told us uh, yesterday it's awesome to be working here and with you. Uh, what does that mean to you? Well, it feels great. You know, um, I'm very blessed, very fortunate. You know, we talk a lot in our program about get the get tos versus the have tos. You know, and so many people right now are stuck on the freeway, you know, in the 405, the 5, where everyone's saying, oh, man, I have to sit in traffic. Wait a minute, you get to sit in traffic. You know, I was just down in Costa Rica where no one has a car. You know, everybody walks through the village. And I was in Mexico building houses with our team last year where there's no toilet, there's no shower, there's no electricity, there's no running water. And people were living on cardboard floors, you know, on a, with a tent over their head, you know, with little kids. So, um, I have to go work out, you know. Well, you get to go work out because somewhere there's a 13-year-old kid with no legs, you know, and there's a 12-year-old kid that's got cancer and is terminally ill. So the get-tos versus the have-tos uh, are huge, you know, for our young people to really, you know, grasp. And I get to be around my son every day, you know, and see his smile and... It's not going to last forever, you know? So every minute that I have with him and, and be able to see him interact with little kids and his girlfriends here, and we're just, I love it, man. And I love going to dinner with him and hearing about his life and just being around him. So not only is, you know, he's my son, he's a cool guy to kind of be around. So it's, it's just one of those really good relationships. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, uh, you talked about the nickel talk, and mm -hmm. uh, you just did that on the, on yeah. the field. We taped it. Uh, I think my boys have up to six of them. Nice. Six nickels. Yeah. Five or six. Sweet. In their room, you know, uh, walk us through what that means when you when people come up to you and say, you know what, I remember, like you said, yeah, I got one five years ago or twelve years ago or 
That's the reward. That 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 is the reward, you know. Um, when Kevin Hansen, you know, um, comes by with his beautiful wife and their baby daughter, you know, and you know they're hey, and they want you know it's like they're really proud, you know, um, and they're both doing great in their jobs. And Luke Roniger, who is one of them at the one of the most prestigious law firms in New York City, just got married. Um, my boy Logan Gelbrick up in uh, Venice, you know, doing his thing um, with uh, the Deuce Gym. He's writing a book. And Chris Bryant in the major leagues and James Pazos and Paul Seawald and Bryant, you know, two dozen players in the minor leagues. That is the reward, you know. And when a high school senior comes up to me and says, I was in your camp when, when I was eight years old and I had the three nickels up there. Uh, that kind of it, it hits you in in your gut, like whoa, man! They were listening. I made some kind of an impact, you know, on being a great teammate, on being unselfish, on being on time, on being dressed the right way, you know, on encouraging your teammates, uh, on being a good friend, you know. So they're looking at those nickels every day as they brush their teeth, and maybe it's just a little bit of a reminder to be that shining star when they walk out of their front door. So that's like I said, that is the reward for me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know what? On behalf of the HOF Village, uh, thank you for walking it every day <laughs> and, uh, and sharing your thoughts. Always a pleasure, Coach. Thank you Awesome. Thank you, guys. My, it's my honor to be here with you guys. Thank you. Right on. Thanks, right. Coach. To the guys, the girls, girls on the team. Very, 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 very the right. It's a great answer, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Communication. The ball, the ball goes, goes up. up. Saying, I got it. I got it. All right. You take it. All right. Play at first base. Communication. Friendship. Friendship. What else? What else? Picking up your teammates. Something goes wrong. Oh, that might that be number one. All right. In baseball, there are things that go wrong. The ball goes through your legs. You strike out. You miss something. The pitcher is out. But you know what? You know what you do as a good teammate. You pick up. Each, each other. other. And you and you encourage, encourage, right? right? It's a great answer. Being a great teammate. Great teammate. Back, there. Back there. Um basically um uh, being a great teammate you never giving up. Basically, basically yeah. Yeah. never yeah. giving up. Yeah. Hey, what are you gonna do? Down, down. 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 You give up? No. no. You know what the beauty about baseball is? There's no luck. No no so anything can happen. All right? You can grind out that and that. All right? You can get a finish goal. The pitcher's in a stretch now. He can walk a guy, hit a guy. And then all of a sudden, you can hit a grand slam. So in baseball, and in any situation, you don't give up. You don't give up. You don't give up. That's a great, That's a great answer. answer. We're not going to quit. quit. We're going to encourage, encourage each, each other. other. Friendship, Friendship is key. key. Man, these are great, great answers. Answer. What else? What else? One, more. One more. Back there. Back there. When you play the game and not the score. You play the game and not the score. You play the game and not the score. Right? Score for it. Score for it. Score for it. Be there, but your focus, focus has, has to be, be on the game, game on throwing the ball, on catching the ball, and hitting the ball. ball. So you know so what we're going to do, do right, right now, now, guys? guys. We're going to build a team. And I want you to come up here right now. Now. What is that? Show the people. It's a dime. Is it pretty shiny? It's pretty shiny. Go ahead and sit down, buddy. Great job. So this dime right, is extremely shiny. What this dime represents, and there's quarters in here and nickels. And I had to go to the bank to get them in a roll because that's how they become shiny. Right? So this shiny dime represents the player right, that never gives up. It represents the player that is going to be encouraging to the other teammates. It's going to represent the player that doesn't argue with the umpire, that doesn't look at the scoreboard, right? and that considers friendship to be very important. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build a team with these shiny coins. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Take a knee so you can see this thing. We got shiny quarters. 
Look at this. Huh? Look at all of that. Wow. That is a strong team. Very strong. Right there. All right? Thanks, buddy. Go ahead and sit back down. A couple more. Look at that, guys. We got a strong tower full of teammates that are on the same page, that are doing things the right way, that are absolutely encouraging each other. Now, I want you to stand up again. What is this thing? Taco a taco penny. This is a bent nickel. This is the guy or the girl that wants to argue with the umpire. That wants to be discouraging to his teammate. That is all about himself, very selfish, doesn't care about the team, only his batting average or his statistics as a pitcher. He doesn't show up on time, right? He doesn't really care. He doesn't stand the right way, right? He doesn't look at his coaches the right way, right? He might talk back to his parents. He doesn't really listen to his teacher in school. This is the guy with the bent nickel. Now, let's see if we can put this bent nickel on here. Uh, we can carry that guy. You guys are going to surround him and make him better. All right? This is going to be challenging. Now it's going to be challenging to get another guy. All right, right here. All right, that's going to fall. Barely falling, and... Man, what happened? The team broke down. Power that we built with those shiny nickels, and the thing crumbled. It's like that sandcastle you built at the beach, and the tide came in and washed it all away. All right, so I'm going to give you a homework assignment right now. I'm going to give everybody in this camp a shiny coin. All right, and what I want you to do is you're going to go home, and you're going to tape this shiny coin, nickel, dime, or a quarter, to your bathroom mirror. All right, now every day when you get up and you brush your teeth and you're getting ready to go to school or your practice, you're going to look at that shiny coin and that's going to represent you being that outstanding teammate today. You're never going to give up, no matter what, no matter how bad it looks. Right? You're going to encourage your classmates and your brother and your sister and your teammates. You're going to burn lasers through your parents' eyes when you listen to them and your teacher and your coach. You're not going to look at the scoreboard, you're just going to keep your head down and do the absolute best you can do. That is what that coin is going to represent on your mirror. You guys got it? Yeah! Two claps. Good job. How many guys are going to go home and do that? Put it on a mirror. That's a great idea, Pistol Pete. Here's the sad part. Okay, you can put your hands down. The sad part of this thing is that only half of you will really do it. Only half of you will remember, right, to go home and to be that shiny coin out there in the rest of your life. But that's okay. Because the half of you that do it, those are my kind of players. Those are Toreros. Those are San Diego Padres. Those are the guys who go out and they make a difference on their team. You guys did a great job this week. All right? Give yourself a hand. Two claps. Great job. Now, we have an award. Rockstar Robbie, what is it? Ah, ah, ah.